Good morning, everybody. This is Melissa with Practically Creative. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to do some scrap sewing, and I would like to show you what I've already made. This is a wrist pin cushion, and I've made it to fit my wrist. I've actually made a few of them, and I actually made these with nothing more than scraps. So today, I'm going to walk you through how to make your own, and then you can make it to however you want it to fit. So we're going to bring you down here to the table and I'm going to show you the supplies that you need. We'll put mine aside here. I have a ruler, a rotary cutter, some Velcro, and I'm using 5 8 inch wide Velcro. You can use whatever size Velcro that you have handy. I have some scrap batting. This also works great with um, polyfill that you would use to stuff a stuffed animal. And I have a little piece of cardboard. Mine came from the back of a charm pack or out of a fat quarter. I'm not sure. Um, but it's just a little piece of cardboard. You could use cereal boxes, pasta boxes, any cardboard that you have. So to make this, first you're going to dig through your scrap bin, find some things that you think are pretty. And then this actually is stuff that I had put SF-101 on when I was making a purse. This was a scrap that was left over. So all I did was I took mine and I cut it to two and a half inches. I cut it to two and a half inches roughly, um, just long enough so that I know it will make um, a 5 8 inch wide or slightly wider strap for my box or for my wristlet. There's the one that has the skinny strip on it. And then I took and I set it around my wrist and decided how much overlap I want. And the reason there's two strips put together is because I want to give myself an extra couple of inches just for the shrinkage factor here. So what I'll do is I'm going to cut it in about 14 inches long. Your um, length will vary depending on how big your wrist is, how small. I don't personally like metal or um, anything that feels like it's got latex in it because I'm allergic to it. So I've cut my piece to the length that I need. Piece to 14 inches. And I'm just gonna give it a quick press to make sure that everything doesn't have any wrinkles in it. And then we're going to do this to it. We're gonna fold it in half. And we're going to press that down. You don't have to have interfacing on your piece. That just happened to be the piece that I pulled out of my box. Now I'm going to take, and just like you would make any other strap, I'm going to fold the outside edge of the strap or the outside edge into the center. Since it's short, I'll do it by going down one side and up the other. You could also fold this both sides at the same time. Again, iron the other side down to the center. If you decide to do this out of something heavier like vinyl or a waterproof fabric, anything like that, you may want to leave a gap in the center just to make it easier for this to all fold in half. But I'm using fabric and mine's, like I said, got a little bit of interfacing. So I'm just going to fold mine so those edges meet. Your iron works as a great weight to hold everything down while you're making it all meet, too. I'm being fairly picky about how mine meets. But no one is probably ever going to see this except you, unless you make them as gifts. So now that I have that all ironed together, 
I need to take it to my sewing machine and I'm going to sew down both sides here. I'm going to sew down the folded edge and then I'll come back up the other side. Okay, so now that we've sewn our strap, we're going to take and we're going to wrap it around our wrist. So you're going to wrap it around wherever you would wear it. <clears throat> if I can grab both pieces at one time. <laughs> Wrap it around your wrist and see how much overlap you do really want. So I'm going to give mine eh, about that much. So I'm giving mine probably three inches of overlap. I'm going to cut the end off here. And then I'm going to neaten this end up just a hair. The little threads that are loose there cut to come off and now i need to make the big decision what shape do i want my little pen cushion to be when i made mine the first one i thought oh i'd like to have a really big pen cushion but this doesn't feel comfortable around my wrist when i wrap it on and it's a little wide there i felt like i would be bumping it into stuff the whole time so although i finished that one and someone may love it it's not the right fit for me this one i like because the pin cushion is smaller and it sits very well on my wrist got a nice little thing um but i was struggling with how to attach this to the strap and when i attached it this way it eh, i'm not really fond of that i'm afraid it'll come off on me so on this tiny one here i attached it the same way but i made it skinnier and a little shorter and this seems to be a good size for me i don't usually have dozens of pins on my hand and you know it'll hold five or six it'll probably hold 20 or 30. Um, but I thought that this was a good size. It fits just perfectly where I want it to sit on my wrist. And the strap is a good length. So play with it until you get what you think is a good size for you. And so I'm good. Now what I have <clears throat> is a couple of pieces of fabric and they're really just literally scraps that I pulled out. I'm going to put right sides together kind of hard to tell which is the right side on this one and my fabrics are about five inches long and about two and a half inches wide what i'm going to do is i'm going to sew down one side across the bottom back up the other side once i have that done i'll be right back with you but before i sew it i'm going to sew or I'm going to press into the ends of my fabric a little hem. I'm just turning under a quarter inch twice. And this will make it easier when I go to close up my little bag that I'm creating here. <clears throat> so I'm going to go to the sewing machine. I'll be right back in just Okay, so now we have sewn our little seam all the way around our back. And what I'm going to do next, I even did my little hems. I backstitched here at the beginning and the end. And I'm going to trim my little corners. Don't cut through your stitching, but get as close as you can get to your corners. And then I'm going to trim right there where the hem is so that there's a little less bulk in the bag. And I trimmed off that end, but I did still give myself a little bit there at the end for a little bit of stability on this bag. Okay, and now I have trimmed at the end. And all I'm going to do next is just turn my little bag right side out. And this is fairly small, so you should be able to do it with your hand. If you made a bigger one or if you can't do it with your hand, 
feel free to use a pencil, a chopstick, or a purple thing to turn your little bag inside out or right side out. And then I'm just going to put my finger down in there and get everything pushed out as well as I can. And then here's my pencil. I'm just going to get down to the corners. And I'm not pushing super hard, just enough to get everything pushed out at those corners. I want mine to be pushed out all the way and to look as neat as possible, but they don't have to be razor sharp or anything like that. And then just get your little bag all pressed out. little heat to that. Oh. So I've ironed my bag and these two fabrics obviously coordinate. You could do it with any scraps you have though. And now I want to look at my wrist and I've got, it's roughly three and a half inches by just shy of two inches. Here's where our cardboard comes into play. I'm gonna take my ruler and I'm gonna go at least a quarter inch shorter than my bag. I'm probably gonna go eh, down to three and an eighth inch. This pencil doesn't wanna write today. What's up with that? So I'm going to go down to three and an eighth inch, and I'm going to go probably one and three quarters. I'm going to go one and a half. My bag is uh, one and three quarters wide, so I'm going to go one and a half. So I'm going to cut two pieces that are slightly smaller than the inside of my bag. And I'm just cutting cardboard, cereal box, whatever piece of cardboard that you have found or that you want to use. And I'm gonna cut on the inside of my lines because while you want the cardboard in there to keep yourself from getting stuck with fins, you also want to give yourself room to be able to stuff your little bag. So now that I've got that done, I'm going to put my cardboard in and make sure it fits. I'm going to push it all the way down to that far end. Now it looks like I've got extra room in there, but I really don't. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach this to my wrist strap. And I'm just eyeballing. But I want that cardboard to be shorter so that when I attach it to the wrist strap, I'm not sewing through cardboard. And then we're going to go over here to my little bits of, of uh, batting or stuffing for a stuffed animal and you're going to get some ready to shove down in that bag now it takes a whole lot more than you think it's going to take to stuff this thing so have yourself a good sized little pile there and i'm just showing you know that i'm cutting up pieces of batting scrap pieces of batting so that might be enough. Let's pick up our little bag. And then you want to make sure that the cardboard is towards the back of the bag and that you stuff the batting down in there in front of the cardboard. So whatever's going to be your top piece, make sure you push the batting in between the top piece and the cardboard. and your finger, a pencil, anything you like, just to push that down in there. 
You want to stuff this very, very firmly. Because you want it to be able to hold a lot of a lot of pens. Look, I don't I don't think I have enough. I'm gonna have to cut some more. I cut it up small so it can sit in there in little bits. And see, I've basically got it about halfway full. So let's cut some more batting here. You can use polyfill, not a problem. I just happen to have a piece of batting sitting here that was too small to do anything else with. I couldn't even create a little quilt sandwich to play to practice my promotion quilting on. So let's see if that's enough. That should be for sure. I'm just going to keep pushing. And keep pushing. <laughs> yeah, I'm being greedy about how much I put in there, I'm putting as much in as I can. Because I want to make sure that this is nice and full. Somebody out there is going, my goodness, look at how much she's getting in there. <laughs> Okay, now I've got it full enough that I can just barely pinch my little bag shut. I'm going to take this over to my sewing machine and I am going to sew through the hems at the end of this right here and then I will be right back. Okay, so now we've got our little bag sewn and then we're going to put Velcro on our strap. That's the next step. I cut about a two inch piece of Velcro. And if you feel it, one side is kind of soft and the other side is scratchy. So you need to put this scratchy part so it doesn't touch your skin. And I've decided that my strap is gonna go around my arm like this. So I've determined where my scratchy part goes. And then on the inside of the other end, I need to put the silky part. This feels way better on my skin than that scratchy stuff would. So I'm gonna put a pin in here and I'm just gonna go ahead and sew this Velcro on. A Couple of things about Velcro. You do not, not, not want sticky back Velcro. You want Velcro that has to be sewn on. You cannot sew through sticky back Velcro. It will gum up your needle and make it impossible to sew. You'll have to change your needle or clean it with alcohol. And I'm going to put it on here so the two pieces meet. So double check that before you go sew this on. And I'm going to go to the sewing machine and sew the Velcro on. I'll be right back. Okay, so now we've got our band all sewn and it has Velcro on it. I'm just going to clean up some lo little loose threads on my bag that's going to hold my pants real quick. You want to do this now because you want it to be neat. And then I'm going to decide where I want my little bag to be put on here at. And I think I want it there. You can always adjust this a little bit on your wrist to make it comfortable to wear. I'm doing a little pushing on this cardboard just to kind of make it a little more movable to go around my wrist. And then I'm going to take my sewing machine and I'm going to sew just the ends of the bag down onto the band and I'm going to back stitch back and forth several times. You can do this by hand. I cannot hand stitch. I have arthritis. It won't let me do it. So we're going to work with what we've got going on. I'm going to take it to the sewing machine, sew down here. And then before I sew that second end on, I will just kind of push everything back towards that first end and just sew through the little bag onto this but I will be putting several lines of back stitching to make sure that it holds on. I'll be back once that's done. We have our little bag sewn to our band. Again, I'm still just kind of 
flexing the cardboard to make it fit a little better. And then I'm going to put it on my wrist. This one's a good size for me. Where it sits at is right where my hand normally hurts whenever it's uh, acting up. So that's not bad. And I like the color. I like the little purple. And you can put, I mean, as many pens as you want in here. But because of those two layers of cardboard, I can stick that in there and it doesn't end up poking me in the wrist. And you can put as many in here as you like. You can use this while you're sewing. You can use it if you're pinning. You can put your pens back in here rather than having to reach up on top of your machine. Let me bring you up here. So, and I don't think it looks too bad. It looks good on my wrist. It fits me perfectly. I can make it a little tighter once that cardboard relaxes a little bit. And it would make a great gift for anybody who, you know, does a lot of sewing, a quilter. You can make them smaller if you prefer for it to have a smaller footprint on your wrist. You can make them bigger. That one's just a little bit bigger. And you can make them out of scraps, any color that you like. So I have some specific sewing that I want to do today. And I'm just poking the pins in there. Probably shouldn't do it on my wrist. But just to show you, you know, how deep that is, it's holding them. They're not going to fall out. It's secure. And I have now a couple extras that I can give away if I feel like it. I can put one next to every sewing machine because my thing is I'm always chasing things down. I'm always looking for where's the next one. I also had the thought that, you know, if you really wanted to, you could make one long enough that it could wrap around the top of your machine and then you'd have a little pin cushion that sits on top of your machine. I keep a magnetic bowl on top of mine, but that long strap with the Velcro on it might work really well as a pincushion that wraps around the top so it's out of your way and you have the pincushions close by to be able to use. I hope you try to make one of these. If you do, please post it on the Facebook group, Practically Creative with Melissa. If you like this, if you like this video, Please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share to your social media and encourage your friends. If you make some, please post pictures. I'd love to see what you make. Um, these are great scrap projects, scrap busters. They're handy and you can make a whole bunch of them in just a little bit. All you have to do is just dig through your scrap bin and see what you have. Have a great day. Thank you for watching.